big difference that people seem to have struggle with. Radiant team ban. Right, exactly. You don't actually know. Yeah. So. All right, that's the first man Phoenix again. I gotta go. That was a really Ten fast lobby. <laughs> Bye. Five seconds remaining. Reserve All right, time. I'm back. And uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, we're going back. I'll, I guess I'll plug in on the other stream. China. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Who needs plugs? I'm the plug. I'm the only plug you guys are gonna get. And oh, more followers. Oh, it was Morta. Oh, nice guy. Good, good guy. Like, like Morta. Dire team ban. And oh no, did I miss? Oh good, I didn't miss anything. Radiant team pick. Okay, sorry guys, we're we're still getting a lot of stuff set up here, as you can imagine, the twitters and everything. Okay, all right, we're back. We're back in game. Dota TV viewers, brought to you by and powered by PGL. We are here. I'll stop typing to random people who are asking me all kinds of fun stuff. So again, we're going to be opening up here with the Phoenix band, and uh, it's clearly something that IG Vitality they just don't want to face. Something that CDC have obviously brought up maybe some scrims up against them, and so they are going to now open up with the Invoker Faceless Void, not going to make his way into this part of the game. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, he had a pretty good showing last game. I'd say he won a couple of those team fights for them. You guys, well, I'm sure would probably agree. Some pretty solid, solid stuff. So, uh, eventual spirit for IG Vitality. Obviously, one of the biggest heroes so far of 6.86. Core roll, support roll. What can't she do? Lots of swaps, lots of plays. Radiant team pick. And she's gonna be paired up again with this uh, magical razor coming into the game so some heavy physical damage minus armor of course coming out with the wave of terror too so good synergy between the two of them and i highly doubt the edc cdec are gonna let them get the razor gyrocopter again uh but we'll see that, that was just a, a really weird draft like we we talked about it and how it was like oh there's no way they're gonna get the gyrocopter and it's like oh okay five so. seconds remaining here now for your invoker pairing a couple options we've seen like the bane it, it, it tends to happen in the mid lane but these two teams they haven't been prioritizing it not making a major appearance in the last game the disruptor maybe going to come out for cdec you saw the effect of uh what he was able to do during those games lots of glimpses lots of plays and then once they started to focus them down and sure they got the chrono on top though and that's when the game got hired again. But instead, they're going to go for the back. Tusk. So, another defensive support. Kind of uh, in the same vein as the American Abaddon. But uh, China, they, they still love their Tusk. A couple of various roles. He was actually the off lane last time, so maybe that roll again. Position 4, of course, always available, but uh, a lot of people tend to like this mech Tusk over here. And so, again, they're going to prioritize the Juggernaut first. I have to imagine with IG Vitality having the first pick out of this phase, though, and they gotta be thinking about that gyrocopter. And they'll ban out the Zeus, and well, they might just ban out an Ember as well. That was uh, in our last phase. The uh, potential for a offlane mech hero in the Darkseer still lies. Like, without the Faces Void available, we could see the Darkseer and Gyrocopter picked up for IG Vitality. I think I would like to see that. And oh well, there's the gyro ban. I mean, there's like no way you let that go, right? And now with the ban, well, with the invoker, uh, we've seen a couple of global strats come out with like AA and Zeus, and so obviously the Zeus already removed. And I kind of like the same idea with the Ember Spirit. Anyone who's almost guaranteed to get that early boots of travel, 
I think that makes a lot of sense. Reserve time. But taking the time, they know that they've got the next picks too, so this is a pretty important step for them. Probably trying to consider what they want and what they're going to try and go for up against them. Tusk and Volker. Uh, generally, what you might be thinking of is things that aren't too susceptible to the roaming, ganking, and Volker. Have a couple different options there. Well, they're actually just going to ban out that Medusa. Uh, knowing that they're still looking for a position one and something that's been run to pretty great effect. A couple of strategies, even relatively early in the game where she wasn't known to shine. So, using up their entire pick. They're going to go with the Lion Bandit last Radiant game, but a great counter to that Terror Blade. And certainly with the Invoker, they could look right to go into that Alacrity Terror Blade. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Let's be honest. And I'm sure CDZ would have loved to opt into that here again. And now, what will the response be from them? Well, position one still in the pool. The Ember Spirit, he is still there, as we talked about. Lion, though, obviously remaining. great against him, too, prioritizing that Blink Dagger. Yeah, gonna be able to catch him out. Five seconds remaining. And so, once again, solid drafting by IG. Um, doing a really good job here. And so, instead, they're gonna offer the PL. Hardly touch. I mean, this guy is just, like... He's pretty much dumpster tier at this point. I'm not sure. Let's Let's take a peek here. He's been picked 42 times. Well, let's compare that to uh, who, who's he sitting around. So in comparison, we've had... Oh, actually, I've added Clockwork, Chen, Templar Assassin. They're, they're pretty good heroes. Man, we have a very pool these days. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, he's sitting at 19 and 23 in terms of win-loss. Not that that really matters, Five let's be frank. Remaining. And, uh... Well, we shall see. Reserve Just, uh... Time. Not that many position ones left, honestly, that people seem viable. Like, you want to be able to fight early, but you also want something going into the late game. You want varied forms of damage. PL, he does work in in all those senses, right? Like the Spirit Lance, it is a pretty heavy nuke. The 250 damage you're spamming on 7 second cooldown, chasing down with the uh, Phantom Rush as well. So we've seen quite a few maxes on that. Uh, I'll be interested to see what he's going to have to go for. With the Ravage now available... Having multiple instances of Doppelganger can be pretty handy. And so, a Rubik pick here for CDEC. Lion, Tidehunter, Razor, Vengeful Spirit, great heroes to steal from. If they've got a Rubik player, this seems like an excellent game to opt into it. Ten Works out pretty well with the Tusk, too. You can snowball into a lift. Five seconds remaining. We'll, we'll soon see. We saw MMY make some pretty great plays Reserved against the Tide Hunter earlier. Other than that, um, let's think about their other role left. We had the offlane tusk. We'll see. I guess we'll just have to assume that's what it's going to be again and look towards Dazzle. two supports, though. And while well, the first support it is going to be the Dazzle. Hmm. Do I fear any offlaner? With an invoker. I think I would fear the lone druid if I was IG Vitality. Not sure if they play it, obviously, on CDECA, but with the alacrity, Ten I'd be more worried about them opting into that because Tusk and Dazzle are such a great support duo with the snowball Five into the heal bomb remaining. that I would go with that ban. Otherwise, I still think I'd ban out the Rubik if I was like convinced it was going to be the offlane Tusk, but for safety's sake, lone druid seems like a good option here for me. And on the other side of CDECA, Pretty. I don't know. I haven't seen a core. Radiant. Oh, they're going with the brute. That's also pretty legit. Same tower sieging, but with a lot more pressure on early. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of core vengeance in China. I'm thinking it's support. Mm, so I'm going to be banning out. Who's even left? Like a wraith king. Ten seconds remaining. He generally works pretty well with the Tide Hunter. Five seconds remaining. Just walking in there, follow up stuns. Maybe a oh a Sven. Mm. Reserve. They don't really have anything to buff him though. But it's good up against PL because you get the long duration stun. And the cleaves okay. 
Doesn't care too much if he runs out of mana later on. The increased Warcry up against the Dazzle. Yeah, I think Sven's a good pick for IG Vitality. And they're going to ban out the Amber Spirit. Of course, another very viable option. I mean, it is a PL, so that's the default ban. Um, and therefore, well, now we get to see the pick. The Grave here for your PL. Tusk. So, if this was an EU game, I'd say it's like Sven, LD, no matter what. But China, they, they like to mix it up a little bit here. Maybe we see a more aggressive position, one like a Slardar, um, to increase their minus armor. It's also uh, something they might opt for. Oh, uh, overlay, no! Oh! <laughs> Reserve time. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, they're going to go for the Glinks. <laughs> and possibly a little bit of an Orchid carrier control on the PL and the Invoker. Pretty odd pick, though. A little risky. And apologies to the stream. We just watched five minutes of uh, complete delay. And CDEC, uh, they're going to go into it with the Undying. Dota TV. Master race, unaffected by my blunder. It happens to everyone eventually. This is when someone should host my stream and we'll be at like four, five, five minutes of I have no choice there. Okay, so <laughs> that's too good. <laughs> Seconds remaining. What do we have? I tend to take their time with the hero pickups here. Maybe trying to leave a little mystery. Oh, here we go. And quick uh, thing, uh, quick TP to the mid lane. Prepare for battle. All right, here we go. We get everything all prepped up here. We're back in the game. Gotta get our, our casting face back on. We gotta, gotta salvage what is left of my career in the Dota scene. And, uh, well, frankly, it, there's not too much to salvage. And flyby. Yeah, he was on the Terrorblade last game. He's now be coming out on this fan, Lancer and Victoria. Moving off onto a Dazzle. This game, Spotty QCC, again, gonna be on the Tusk. And September, moving off that Spirit Breaker onto the Undying. So. They're going to group up here. And the Dire, they've, they've made their presence known down bottom. 30 seconds to battle. So, yeah, clearly we are going to have your clinks up in the top lane. And your Adventure Spirit just supporting up there. So no wacky shenanigans. Nothing too insane. Uh, one thing, the Radiant didn't choose, um, which I've seen a couple times, to come up here and help deal with this camp. It is obviously a great way for the Titan to stay in the game, but he, on the on the other hand, has not gone for the Iron Talon, which is something that we've had quite a few Tidehunters doing lately. Gold is a great conductor. And so, teams, they'll just trade the runes here. Both to the mid lanes. Invoker versus the Razor. Well, what does this mean? The Purge, obviously, going to be pretty good um, up against any sort of action here in terms of like Cold Snap. If it's going to be more of the control, judging by their lineup, I'm not sure what I favor from this Invoker. Is it Quas Wex to try and control them up and let the PL kind of go to work, get him in good positioning for the right clicks? I feel like they might lack image in this lineup, like with your Undying and everything like that, your Tusk, your Dazzle, and increasing the physical damage. But generally, we won't really know until around level 4. Tends to be when the Invoker will actually reveal what he's doing. Either by going for the two points in the Wex or something else. It looks like XXS, he's dropping low that uh, Anchor Smash. 
reducing the right clicks enough and it looks like in the mid lane there might be the other first blood and both heroes being run out of their lane here so so far so good for the side of cbeca and oh there's a little cheeky play here won't be able to cancel this out though victoria tries to make something happen but he's using his range to his advantage in terms of the harass game And so on dying, he's gonna head to home. Tusky, he's being okay. Take a look at the wards here. Obviously, in the back line here, they're gonna be uh, just placed down here by the dads. I'll have an idea if he's going up towards that camp, which is a pretty big deal. Bottom as well on the rune. One here, too. And now with this rotation, it's only gonna be just to secure the rune. So Tusk, he'll ice shards, but a little bit risky here. He'll just have to leave and sack this rune. So they'll give it to the line, uh, of course, looking for that early blink dagger. And uh, where is our first blood going to come from? Does this Tusk have the Iron Town? No, he's not opting for it either. So many games today, I've been seeing it happen. On um, these soft laners. Regeneration! Dazzle, he'll grab that regen rune on the bottom. And still very quiet here. Oh, there's a the damage sap here. Cold sap turnaround. Second point into Exhort. I am still leaning towards being Quas Exhort. I, I think this makes some sense with everything else they are dealing with. And not much opportunity here. Lion. Uh, not able to really zone out the Tusk that well without some assistance, but of course you can't rely on that fact. And uh, with just a couple stuns here and right clicks from the clicks, you see just how much trouble he can be in in, in the in an instant. So, uh, talking about this camp again, oh, sounds deafening blast. Just me harassed. Only a single tango. But um, in the camp, the reason why I was a little surprised I didn't block it off is exactly this. It's one of the ways the tide can stay relevant. Maybe they will make a play. Is this a sentry ward to go? Nope. So Yi Chen trying to throw his own harass here. He's using the plasma field and it's only level 2. And Spotty gonna make a rotation. Put the dire side. This ward was here. And they actually watched this be placed. By the end dying as well. So they know that they have vision there. And you might see, is there a sentry? There is. So you should be able to just grab this up here. He even has a tango to eat it. There's like no question they saw this ward get placed. Oh, not gonna grab. All right, there we go. Sneaky little D ward spot. Actually, that's a that's a really good spot. Look how much it covers. Let's talk about this for a moment. This is like the perfect D ward spot. So you come up, and it's right to the right of this tree. All right, good stuff. That's very interesting. I haven't seen too many, and that's also a lot harder for the radiant to D ward too, right? Because you have to walk up here and actually get it. So that's perfect. Good stuff. Under We're learning all about 6.86 here, guys. So they're going to put another ward in the mid lane. Just trying to help this invoker, trying to keep him up and active. QD and your PL. Not talk about too much, but that's just because they're really not running into too much trouble. Just farming away, have themselves a good old time. Fly by. Ever so slightly in the lead. But not a big difference. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. TV down bottom, it'll be the Tide Hunter. But again, not much. And DD room, they can't go on each end. 
so a little bit more harassing again. Six minutes in, still no for blood. A little bit of a resonant sleeper match here, as they say. So take your bets now with the current. I'll even give you the net worth so you can have an idea here as to who you think is going to die. Oh, Spotty, that DD is still going for quite a ways. I, should, I believe it came out there. Yeah, there was a little bit of a lag there. And Dyer's he does live. Is under attack. <laughs> Thanks, perfect world. Now, if there's a dive here, there might be a little bit of regus from Babovka. Can you tell? Into the hex, can they get it? The meatball! Oh, oh! Come on! Come on! First blood! Finally comes up for you, Chen. He and Tusk got low, he left, but now the Invoker may be in trouble for Charlie here. He's gonna show up with the heals, though. And need Chen. No stolen damage here. Decayed up. And not a quick turnaround here. They might be able to look at that, but he'll just salve up. Alright, so one kill now. At the seven and a half minute mark. Sunstrike actually did hit up Vovka. Nicely played. Magic Missile comes out. Spotty. Take oh my god. Your flesh. Wow, two points in that wave of terror, and you can see just how much that's gonna help. As they utterly crush him with no items. But full points in the steering arrows. Holy. That is insane. Remember, it is physical damage added on here from the Searing Heroes. That is a, such a disgust. I just can't even believe. I don't want to miss a death. Oops. Let's take a look here. 150 damage. Yeah. That is insane. So they'll grab that tower. And you can see. Just how heavy he is hitting. Demised. Flyby though, as well. He is also continuing to farm. He's still 600 below the clinks now because of that kill. Oh, second kill possibly here. Oh my God! <laughs> Unreal. Not even need the points in the stripe and. Uh, Interesting, going for the full points in the scale tomorrow, a lot of Lynxes will only take the one, maybe two. Um, definitely during the laning phase, they usually try to skip it overall until they actually need it from around the map, but... QDN's just gonna hold onto those and not go into the strafe. I mean, he's with the tower, so what's it matter? Oh, XXS. He's got that Iron Town we talked about. He's got that Arcane Boots. He's got 500 gold. He is shockingly farmed. Considering the lane, like, he hasn't even been in. Uh, but he's up 30 CS. He's been able to clean up a few creeps around the tower, too. Ron comes down, he'll get it. Oh, missed that last hit. Can't do that as a support, guys. Snowball mid lane, but too fast on the Razor. Let's see, this clings, though. Oh, a little bit laggy. He's got his soul ring up, and what's he got now? Gonna take a fairy fire home. He's going right into a deso extremely early here. For your player, September. Top. Let's let's talk items here, guys. So, they're thinking about snowball here. Mm, can't get it. So quick. Is this an orchid game for the pickoffs? Eventually, I don't think so. I think it's more just heavy physical. Well. They need the control. Not with Lion. If he gets a decent timing on the blink. QD. He's singing about this here. It's even a bait. And oh, it's going to be the perfect situation for QD. They're snowballing in the top of the meatball drop as well. But he's running out. And they're like, oh, why is he running out? Because there's a clinks on the back line. Chunking through the two of them. He's going to grab himself a double kill. And maybe not the soul rip. Okay, that's not. That's. All right, that is a double kill. We're right, guys. Don't worry. A little bit of perfect world action. But we can still cast for that, right? Unbelievable. So, again, the the reason I say just straight damage, obviously, he's already got the Mithra Hammer, but who needs control in a situation like that? Three or four shots them. And QD is a terror roaming the radiant side of the map. Heroes beware, Dazzles beware. 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. He'll have grave TP, so. No, that sentry, that's not gonna work though. If he's on. Oh, wait, there's an observer. That isn't gonna work. Alright, they see him. They're trying to bait this out. Mm, let's see if he. Key, rather. Let's see if he lists. Well, I'm just not seeing a good opportunity. No one did the, the uh, grave there. So, continue putting pressure on the bottom tower along with XXS. He is going right into the mech, already purchasing up the headdress and the chainmail. And I like this as well because all he has to do is sip sign QD and wait until they come in on him. And that's where the ravage is going to come from. It's not a, a blink requirement here. Yeah, and we saw these early levels on Tusk being an issue. Still only level 3. But then again, he is a tusk. Level 5 on Zion QD. Again, you get a chance to go down. I don't need the finger. That might have last right click. Might have got it. There's the Ravager. It's not going to quite catch the PL, however. They immediately bring it. Oh my god, this clinks is insane. Look at this. Why is he not going for the self grave quite yet? But look at the tower being destroyed. I just can't believe how well this is doing, considering how little we see the hero. Quick doppelganger heading out to the western side, but they will get the hex. Not enough mana here. Is under attack. Yeah. For the Earth Spike. Alright, well, the Midas here. Can we find your Invoker? Another sentry. They spot out the Clinks, but I mean, honestly, what are they? He might just kill you now. Dyer's Swap. Is under attack. Uh, okay, I guess they're gonna decide they want to try and fight us. There's a swap. It's kind of like your old drow strats using the uh, The vengeful spirit able to just swap around so QD can go in as deep as he wants and Ron can just hold it on, on the plus side as well They could also just get a swap inside the Tower if they want gonna. Oh, he got fogged. I think he was good for it. He's got uh, nice, nicely, nicely done waiting it out there on the grave No, no, there is a ping there. That was actually from the dazzle saying just stay in there man. Do not come out if they spot you, you are in trouble. It's gonna TP home. And another deck means another stack of damage on top of this planks. You're actually gonna see the tusk. <laughs> Can you imagine if they get a swap here? Yes, it is still available. TP top lane, the ventral spirit. She wants a little bit of farm of her own. She says, man, this clanks, he's getting all the fun. Oh, TP's out. And the deso. Put on top here. And ready to keep crushing these team fights. Fairy Fire sold. TP scroll gained. And what's next here? A couple different options here. Uh, probably just BKB, honestly. Not against your invoker. Like, why, why get stunned as well by Snowball? Why even worry about it? Just grab BKB. Easy game. And of course, it is Exhort, so... Maybe he's feeling... Radiance top tower yeah, no, screw it. Attack. I think you just get it. You can always get the Orca, too. You know, play it a little bit greedy. And, uh, like, the Sunstrike does come out on the boss, but then we'll get the kill. Clank will not be able to track this down, but now the Ravage is going to pop. They actually do get snowballed, however, will it be enough to save them? Sunstrike on to three, Cutie, he does get that kill on the back lines as we're watching this, and that means no work for this fight, and he's the vast majority of their net worth. Him and the PL, speaking of which, well, he gets swapped. No TP coming out there. Damage now stacking up flyby at the same time. Victoria, he's just like, oh, I'll just upgrade myself because you don't have TP. So, goodbye to the PL player. <laughs> and this is just destruction. By the side of IGV, they can head right into the Roshan pit. Hellbear, gonna be boosting this damage even further for the And a big win. <laughs> So, mech, 700 gold, they'll be having a blink dagger for the sieging of the high ground, which could come soon. Did they even give the Aegis QD? It looks like it. Razor, they used to core that was a better Aegis carrier, they might give it to him. But, this is just going to allow the swap to be used more offensively, rather than saving it for QD. And they actually are within vision here on the Radiant side. And they're probably going to know this. 
Oh, but there's a blink for it because he's a bit in the dire too. It's body going down. This ward doing quite a bit of work here. Swap. Yep. Dazzle. Dead. No grave. And now with them gone, I'm just going to try and nuke this creep wave as fast as possible. Cutie? Chasing down the invoker. Oh, can he actually get us too? Three. Yeah. Oh my god. That chrysalis. <laughs> <laughs> I, he should have dust, honestly, but whatever, it's fine. He doesn't have enough item slots, man. He can't be the only one who deals with the invoker. Goodbye, tower. He lived a noble life. PL, he gets a, a slight trade. He's gonna have the diffusal blade now. Is this going to be enough? Well, they finally get the item that might be able to turn it, and, uh, well, there's an Aegis on QD. So, not as simple as it seems once the Diffusal Blade comes out. And is the play going to be? Maybe a Snowball into a Stun Strike? Obviously, opting for more of this offensive possibility means there is no BKB for QD, and he's just here underneath the sentry ward. But he should know this is sentry because their ward gets. Uh, well, maybe it didn't get dewarded, I suppose. It could have been that uh, it expired first. It was close. So it could have actually the opposite effect. Either way, with the blink initiation on the line, he, he should know that they know that there was a ward there. I don't think there's a question about that. There's a smoke. And they will make their way out. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So they smoke up now. They're gonna run into Yi Chen. Snowball down on top. Tombstone as well. Mass TP's coming out and involved. In oh, a two-man earth spike. Big play and the Ravage to top it off. Oh my god, it's basically double Ravages coming out here. Invoker, he's escaping, he's gonna be TPing. They're pinging it out on the PL doppelganger over to the eastern side. He's gonna start his own TP here. Can they reach him? No, not quite. Oh, that's a little bit disheartening. So they you get the kill on the Razor though, at the very least. And they'll deny the mid tower. And Evan will be respawning shortly. So fine as diffusal blade, not really getting a big chance to go to work here. On the clinks. Spotted again through these sentry boards and observers. They're gonna have a general idea of where QD is looking to move and <laughs> that means Spotty, he's out of here. And sentry wards all over the ground, but they just don't have the lockdown. Like what are they gonna do? QD, I think he can sense it. Okay, now he just knows, but like, what, what does it matter? There's no lion on the radiant side. There's, there's no equivalent. The closest they have is Snowball, but he's too fast. There's a Clinks. He can just outrun it. It's a really great pick here. Up against the lineup of the radiant. So now, that age is it's going to be expiring extremely soon. Or, one would think. I guess it's one more minute here. Alright, so, time to go. Get up on this high ground. CDCA looking to possibly get eliminated from the winner's bracket semifinal one and had dropped down to the lower bracket face against newbie Chuan squad. All right, taking the high ground here. There's no Ravage and they should know this. And they'll quickly burn the mana, so it's okay. He wouldn't be able to use it anyway. Damage coming out. I sure it's well. They might be able to get the kill here, but there's a guy in Greece popping out now on top of QD. They're finally going on top of me. Guess what, guys? There is an Aegis still here and ready. So up he comes. And waiting to swap out. Keeping each other alive. Great plays by Ron. And now QD. They will lose the Razor. They might lose the Clinks. Okay. Taking this fight without the Ravage. Possibly the big mistake here from the dire side. Gonna be tracking down Wrong. He's got the TP. This it would be a great chance to use it. I guess they're gonna try and fight instead. And fly by snowball coming through. Wrong will go down here. No, nope. no walrus punch. Oh no, walrus punch. Well, it doesn't matter. I sure it's. 
XXS. He's just gonna die. Guardian's Greaves, Arcane, <laughs> rather, Anchor Smash. I mean, he's not gonna live, right? Right? Oh, oh! <laughs> Trying to make some plays. He'll drop. They actually do have to abandon the line thanks to his blink dagger, and he was the gem too. So, pretty. Whose gem is it? Oh, it's Rong's gem. I wonder if he saved it from his body. Either way, big plays. But in the end, the big thing is this massive gold swing. Thousand to the invoker. Thousand, pretty much test. Thousand to the dazzle. All right. See, they just didn't really get. I mean, Clanks quite literally did nothing in that fight simply because he just got chained stunned completely uh, up on the high ground. A little bit too aggressive. If you don't have that reset effect after the Aegis of the Ravage, you really can't stand up there. I think. I don't know if he was counting on a swap and maybe that was a misplay by Wrong or uh, some sort of a miscommunication. It's possible in the back line maybe there was some sort of a stun that I couldn't quite see, but I thought he was freely moving back there. Uh, we did see him having a lot of bit of focus on. Uh, or rather, quite a bit of focus on Yi Chen trying to keep him up. Probably thinking that they weren't going to lose their clinks. By the way, in the total graph, it's only going to bring them back to about 8,000. <laughs> Up above only. I suppose obviously a big win here. Is this a smoke? It is, and they are correctly predicting where they're going to be, even with no vision. They're running, they've got the dust, looking for QD, but it won't connect onto him, and now he wants to prove the manly man that he is. So Grave here, a little bit of perfect world action. QD being four staffed back. He brings down the tusk. Dust now pops. So they'll see him this time. Another chunk. Can't quite get it wrong. Swaps QD up to the north. But guess what? That diffuse blade comes through with the earth spike. He needs to turn to fight this. There's no way you get out of this anyway. Sentry! Greaves! Ravage! They turn. He needs to turn and fight. No, he's going to leave. They're just going to let the other core go to it. It's going to be Yi Chen on the back side. QD coming back at one, two, three. Doppelganger. Can't find the correct one. Going to try and burst him down. They get it with the illusions now. They see flyby escaping. Running here, QD. He's gonna have to like stop and farm some creeps. Yi Chen, he wants his kill, he gets it. And the TPs all come out here. Great swap, great play. Sacrificing himself is wrong. And 7 to 21 is the kill score. Gonna start making their way back up to that lead that they once had. And maybe being a little bit more cautious here until they get into the next ages. And oh, well, speaking of cautious, we actually do have the BKB up now for, for QD. And suddenly that Diffusal Blade is just like, oh, well, issues are ahead. It'll be about three minutes here, as you can see, for our next Roshan. So, uh, oh, wow, yeah, almost max spawn. That's post timer uh, and the reveal. Wrong again, just having a great game. Played well in the Witch Doctor previously. Impressed so far with what he's been able to offer to his team. Tide Underplay has been very good as well, and it's only going to get better now that he's the Blink Dagger. One minute until the Ratch comes. We'll see what they want to go towards. Clinks. All these sentries back down again in very similar places. Did they have a gem? They didn't give it to him. So we're going to keep it on the, uh, maybe the Venge has it again, just to make sure he doesn't get caught. I sure it's will come out, which makes QD think, oh, they don't see me. No, they're going to leave it on the ball. Yeah, not going to give it back. He's like, ah, Venge, you know, you, you lost. This. But no, it's probably just for blinking forward and catching out that invoker. Trying to sneak himself away. Tide under, just doing tide under things, standing there for Blanca. Oh, blink, four staff. Look at this deep spot he's got himself into, and the ward. Okay, if they, if they try and defend this, that is just a disaster. What a, what a sneaky little play. They see the undying single hand granite, but there is the Agnum Scepter. Maybe something they can use to try and spam with his waves, and uh, of course the team too. Radiant side, they're very deep in here. It's kind of a mix of heroes. Oh, the axe comes out, and this is making trouble. The grave does have it, and the figure actually he's on the grave at the same time. Fly by the returning class of healed, it'll get the kill. Get him with the spirit lance, and now in the trees, Victoria going down. So, Tusk man, TPO. 
Fox is going to be here for the PL as well. Pretty, pretty risky positioning in a game like this. And so many of the heroes just are not visible in other lanes. Oh, they check Roshad. They're probably bringing the courier down, honestly. Uh, it's going to return to but a lot of teams in this case, you'll just like sit the courier in there. Make sure you're aware when it'll be popping back up. Ah, and they're going like they're spotted now. So the date was fully completed here for the clinks after going back to the BKB. <laughs> you thought they were dying quick before. So there's the Aegis Ring with Quill left in the pit. Send the courier out to grab it, and here we go, the big push. He's gonna be under vision here. Not gonna death back this? Interesting, what's he waiting on? I guess uh, for the actual push, he's gonna be a little bit more patient here. Okay, no, he'll just grab a different creep. Who knows? The mind of QD is a place that we are not privy to. QD. Continue to keep up this farm. Mana style going to be a big item here for the PL. Increase the number of illusions they're going to be getting this mana burn off. And specifically, that's a pretty big issue on top of XXS. Yeah, he's going to be yeah, hiding in the back lines. Looking for that big ravage. So, what, what's your what's your defense here? What's your dream defense? Well, ice shards blocking out. Uh, sometimes when the clinks comes up, you know he'll be like here or something. If you can get an ice shards, it'll give us a little bit of a block. It's probably the big play and just combo up. Even if you dump Meatball and everything on top of the Clinks, that's probably worth it. As you see, without him, you know, the Razor is actually Dyer's below top heroes top like top the Invoker top. and the PL. And the fight, uh, well, it might just go the same as last time. He's up on the high ground. Here it comes. There's the EMP. There's the actually going to be the BKB very early. Again, this is going to be post, or rather pre-Ages. And now he won't have it post-Ages, so... He's going to get the melee racks even after the glyph though, so good use of your 10 second DKB. Now the stuns are going to come in. Here comes the Ravage, going to be able to create some space. They're going to immediately be uh, losing that stuff. One Daedalus crit seems to get rid of about 99% of his health. And looking for the proper PL. He actually did find the number one illusion, so possibly uh, convinced that was the real one QD. And there goes that Aegis Invoker coming back in with the Aghanim Scepter. Ice Wall on top of the Clink spawn. Should be able to QVD. Oh, a nice Earth Spike. Trying to catch on too. It's only going to be onto the PL, though. Might be able to secure his escape. Going to turn around and get the Force Staff onto Wrong after swapping out QD. And it looks like they just want to leave happy with their taking of the melee Rex. Alright. Blink Dagger now onto Wrong. and can be easy, even easier to pick him up. <laughs> can they keep swapping this gem over to Baboka? But the blink saves. I'd like to see maybe an Agnum Scepter too, just for the cooldown, so we can save two heroes potentially. Tire side vision. Oh, we actually do miss one of the, the pickoffs here. And this is kind of what. Oh, there's the sentry. They, I mean, they know he's got me. They have the second sentry here too. Looking at Baboka, trying to get the sun. Oh, it's just the finger of death. Hello, great. He's not TPing fast enough though. And he's just gonna die because of it. The big deal is that he just can't let his uh, invoker get spotted out. A little bit scared that he even drew him towards him. So high ground. It is only level 14, so he still has the four second cooldown. A uh, pretty big difference, obviously. Gonna be double. What he'd love to be having here at level 16. And QD. Surprised they're not going to push in the middle lane a little bit more. I guess feeling pretty comfortable even without the Aegis that uh, they can just take one at a time. Don't need to do a little bit of a split push. And while well, you can see by the tower, no glyph. They know that is down for certain. 
And so on the high ground he'll go and another use of the BKB perfectly done. It's gonna be avoiding that tornado and just get the melee rush and they can just leave. There's nothing they can do about this. Anything they attempt will just be a swap back and this time it'll be on to the razor. Guaranteed spotty comes in way too deep. He appears to be getting drained and going down. Meatball now flying down as well. Doesn't seem to hit all too much. Chasing out the wrong. It looks like they will get one kill, but it's a sacrificial venge. Yu Chen stand up here from a cold snap. Nope, not in time. And so they will lose the vengeful spirit. Completely fine with that. They got another melee rex. And again, the, the plot continues. Show up, BKB, kill the thing. I actually really like the way the Kling's flying it. He's now opting into a maelstrom. And subsequent only. he already has the hyperstone. Very interesting item choice. Not going for. Uh, I don't know, I guess he doesn't feel like he needs a Lincoln's not really the game for that. Um, maybe some evasion, like a butterfly or something up against the PL would be okay, but that's eh, okay. Just more damage, Mjolnir shield, and a uh, faster creep pushing. Invisibility. Poor attack speed, never gonna be a bad thing. And uh, again, in the in the same vein of closing up the game here, they're going to be going for the Agnum Scepter on their Razor. Allow him to start tackling down these buildings. So, Ravage online, Blink Dagger online, QD, eating a crate. You have to think we're getting close to party time over here. QD coming in. Oh, there's a blink and the stun onto no no. Is that and nope. Anyway, Ravage as well. I had to tell him a little bit of PowerPoint Dota that we got here, courtesy of China. September goes separate tries to TP, but it looks like there was a swap there at the end. And Victoria will get trapped on by Buwoka. So using your last two here, five back on the invoker right away. Fly by still in the base. He will have his buyback. So you can see buyback from the Dazzle now used, and that is the one who does remain with it. Once the Clank shows up, though, it's going to be KB if they set up here at time. Maybe that might be able to save for a little bit. Tornado is trying to get nice and close. It won't so. Just these, uh, obviously, low levels in the Wex definitely hurting the Invoker here on the defense. Hey, what if you're just going to back away? There we go. We're going through a little bit rough fast here. Well, desperate times to call for desperate measures. We're going to have a smoke, go play here, see if they can get themselves a pick. Managed to get their lanes out decently far. It was hard to tell if that was seen by the board. No, they were on high ground. It should be fine. So they are in here. Plasma field coming out. Invoker looking for the big plates. Going to be throwing down the EMP. See the stops and the swapping and everything like that. There's no ravage, of course. They did just lose that fight. And it looks like they are still losing this one. Lost the Invoker. Lost the Dazzle. No buyback either. They have been used the GG. It will come. It was, it was a desperate maneuver. They, they knew that. But there's no way they make that game. Nothing think we're better. Okay, so it is over. <laughs> and, uh, that that also the body by Italian and move forward, and that will be up against LGD, and that is up next. We will be finishing off the winners bracket tonight. The winner of that goes to Shanghai. So I'm pumped up. I guys are as well. Uh, I've been uh, oh, Sorry for the uh, what I'm sure is slow and stumbly casting. We're we're about uh, well many hours in. We'll just, we'll <laughs> just go with that. Honestly.